Hi, everyone. I am Dylan McGee, founder and executive producer of Makers, and welcome to Makers at Home Live, coming to you live from sunny Westchester, New York. And I am really excited about our guest today, the editor in chief of Glamour Magazine, Samantha Berry. Um, I have been a uh, long time Glamour Magazine fan, um, and I've also gone every year to their um, Women of the Year event, which is extraordinary and always a very inspiring night. I went for years under um, the leadership of Cindy Levy, and now, of course, Sam Barry. And uh, I mean, I don't know about you, but I've had to sort of pull back a little bit on my news consumption. Um, and uh, it's, you know, I'm, but what I'm finding a lot of joy in is um, outlets like Glamour. I mean, Sam's been doing these fun things and we're gonna talk to her about all of them, like love in the time of COVID. And I mean, I think she's even learning how to do TikTok which I really want to talk to her about, um, you know, fun recipes and things like that. So I'm excited to bring a little joy into your household today with Sam. But before we bring her on, one last thing. Um, you know, the truth is I have never met Sam, even though I'm calling you Sam. I hope that's okay. Um, but she came to the Makers Conference this year. Um, she attended it felt like every session, which meant so much. Um, and she then wrote this beautiful recap of her experience. And um, of course, it's always nice to get positive feedback. Um, but what I loved more, and I told her this, uh, was that it can sometimes be competitive in the women's space. Um, and it meant a lot that she wrote that and it shows what a class act she really is. So let's meet this class act, Sam, my friend. Um, I This is always my favorite part of these live things, but Sam is so media savvy, she's going to be there. Here we go. Okay. Coming to you live, Glamour Magazine. Here we go. Three, two, one. Hi. Hi. We did I'm it! So happy! Technology is our friend. Huh. All right, now this the rest is easy. This is easy. I I worked in uh, broadcast news for many years, and that is the the part that you get scared about: the going live. Do we have the technology? Is it working? We did this, Sam, with Gloria Steinem, who had never done Instagram Live before. She's she's by herself, you know, eighty six years old in her apartment. And the whole team, we had all these things going on. And, and it was like, when she got on, I was like, okay, that's going to keep me going. If Gloria Steinem can do an Instagram Live, anybody can. Right. Also, have, you, have you been watching Miss America? It is amazing. I know. It's amazing, isn't it? Amazing. Oh, I'm, 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 that I'm, Uzo is really crushing it. Um, I'm hooked. Yeah, good. Well, hi. Hi, how are you? Which, is it okay that I call you Sam? Sam is exactly what I want you to call me. Okay. You, you would tell me, wouldn't you? No, yeah, Sam, Sam, that's it, Sam, Sammy, if I'm in trouble with my parents. Oh, Sammy, Sam, okay, Sam okay. well, you're not in trouble with me <laughs> at all. Um, so I want you to know that I may be wearing a sweatshirt, but oh I did put on some blush for you. It was my first time in five weeks putting on blush. Well, a funny thing about it, so I had my boss is um, Anna Wintour, and she's been wearing a lot of nautical sweaters. So for her, her you may have seen on Vogue when she's been, um, you know, talking about what Vogue has been doing for COVID and the fashion industry, there's been a lot of nautical sweaters. So I had a meeting with her today on Zoom and I wore a nautical sweater. I don't think she noticed, but that was my plan. <laughs> I love it. So tell me, where are you? You are... I'm in Manhattan. I'm in Chelsea. Okay. Um, uh, it's interesting because the first couple of weeks, well, I'm Irish. So the first couple of weeks, I think the hardest part for me about social distancing and COVID was my sister's in Sweden with her family. My parents are in Ireland. My brother's in Ireland. And when travel gets taken away from you, I think that was, that happened in America. That happened globally. That was really unsettling for me. Not that I see my family every month, but when that gets taken away in a time of a crisis, that, 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 that was the hardest part for me early on. Yeah, it's just sort of, it's even though you weren't doing it all the time, it's just the knowing that I can't get there if I need to. How, are, how is everyone in your family doing? 
Great. My brother's a police officer, so he's on the front line. Wow. Uh, my sister's got three beautiful kids in Sweden. They, Sweden have, uh, have taken a different tact with social distancing. They're not really doing it. So uh, it's been interesting to check in. In Ireland, they've really flattened the curve. But as soon as you close the pubs in Ireland, people aren't congregating. So <laughs> that's easy enough. So are the pu they haven't reopened yet, have they? No, no, no. no you can't no. move. In Ireland, you can't go two kilometers outside of your house. <laughs> oh, it's so hard. How um, are you doing? Where are you? I'm in, I live outside of the city in Westchester, and uh, I'm here with my husband and my uh, about to be 18 year old son. Oh, wow. Who is a senior in high school, so he doesn't get to have his, you know, senior spring and graduation and all those things. Although he's, yeah. he, he goes to a great school, they're trying to come up with something creative for his graduation. But Interesting enough, actually, I think that is something that we've been talking about at Conde about people. Um, First of all, at Condé at large, missing those moments of life, right? So Teen Vogue are going to do a virtual prom and valedictorians. I think that's great. Uh, for us, we talk to a lot of women in their 20s and their 30s and the, the events that they're missing out on are weddings and the mommy groups if they're giving birth right. during the pandemic. We're talking to a lot of those women. And it is hard. Like, I mean, we're obviously just being asked to stay at home, but you're missing those kind of moments of life um, and we're talking to a lot of those women but what's been interesting is a lot of them are being very innovative um, we're talking to women that are getting married on zoom or you know having virtual mommy groups if you're yeah. giving birth around now so it, it's an interesting time for every generation how has it been trying to keep an 18 year old in the house ah uh, i'm lucky that um he is uh he's a good egg and he's been joining in on the cooking and, you know, not so great on the laundry, but I'm working on it. Has he been teaching you TikTok? I have, as an older millennial, <laughs> learned TikTok. I did one. There was a challenge and um, I, I, you probably, or P&G did a challenge early on and I went on and I did it. And that's where my 18 year old is like, mom, mm -mm. Yeah, ixnay on the ictok tay. But tell Do you me know what I love about I love that. So we just Glamour just launched on TikTok this week, right? And we did the first TikTok around the Beauty Awards. But what's been interesting as a lurker in recent weeks on on TikTok and a person that does TikToks and saves them in my draft and doesn't publish them, <laughs> is that I love the cross generational of like mothers dancing with daughters, and you get this beautiful. Um, I mean, we all love to dance and we all love to like have fun and. There's a comedy and a, there's a very creative element to it. So um, we're learning a lot in, in Glamour about how, how, how TikTok works for us. I think I could get hooked. I really do. And, and I do think I should tell, as a feminist mother, I should tell my son, like, you know, you can cook with me and you can do TikToks with me. Exactly. I'm going to try, Sam. I'm going to try another one in your honor. Do it. So what else? I mean, no, what I, I was really excited to talk to you about is you know, love in the time of uh, COVID. I just think your coverage is, there's so, such a wide range. You know, we were at the Maker scene, we were just talking about the article about the two people who met, you know, through the On window. The roof. I mean. I know. Do you know what? I think it's interesting, even during a time of pandemic, when everything is shut down, how much, how much love makes the world go round. And so we started this series just over a week and a bit ago called Love in the Time of Corona. And we've actually been asking for submissions and the submissions we've got from the audience have been beautiful. They're every, I'm a single girl in New York. It is quite isolating, but like loads of people are virtual dating. Like we've been talking to women about what they wear on their virtual date. Like what are the <laughs> virtual date chat up lines? If you are in a couple, what does that look like? Or um, social media editor did this amazing piece about, you know, uh, cohabiting in an intense time. What does that mean for your relationship? Uh, we've got a lot of first person essays. So on the like super positive side, what does love look like? What does marriage look like? What does weddings, what do weddings look like? And then on the kind of uh, more somber side, we've been doing a lot of coverage uh, uh, which is something Glamour has done for years since Ruth Whitney and Cindy and all the editors that came before me. What does it look like for domestic violence in this time? Because yeah. that's a really worrying uh, time. We've also done a lot. This is International Infertility Week. What does miscarriage look like in this time of isolation? Um, and I think 
also anything to do with mental health i think if anybody is suffering from anxiety or depression these things are heightened during this time and we as a brand as a women's title we're just there to really help women tell their story and be a service for them and i think that's been the really nice part of being a service for women um when they may be struggling during this time or if they just want to tell a happy story about falling in love and getting married i know i really i do love it and, it, and there is such a i mean you mentioned um, you know, miscarriages and there's also, you know, having going through labor, you know, during this time and not having a significant other in the room. And I mean, there's just so many. Are you feeling overwhelmed by stories coming in? No, or I mean, over, no, but we're actually really enjoying them as a team. Interestingly enough, we our first cover that happened during COVID. We had shot Alex Morgan star World Cup, you know, winner. She was we shot her. Um, in February, she was eight months pregnant. The plan was that she was going to give birth and go to the Olympics. Now that shoot was still her cover in late March, but we went back to her because the world had changed. And she told us how she supported obviously the decision of the Olympic committee to postpone, but also how she felt as a pregnant mo mo mother going into a pandemic. Yeah. Um, we do, we've heard from a lot of women that have been rethinking what their birth looks like. We've heard from women that have been veering towards home births because if they're unsure if they can have their partner in the room. So I, I do think that, that that's a conversation that are happening. And then when it comes to weddings, brides you know they're an interesting community that want to share what they have planned so when that goes away in the time of covid i think they've been finding each other through glamour and through these stories on love in the time of corona and sharing their bridal stories we have a bridal column from sassy from vanderpump rules she writes for us as a bride to be and you know it's interesting as you do at makers which i loved when i'm like it feels like a lifetime ago Doesn't now it? but a lifetime ago, early February, this February, year, different year. I know. it was it was straight after uh, the Oscars yes. and we uh, went in and um, m one of my resounding memories was you coming out at the start and your energy is so infectious still and I have to say and then you were like and uh, a Who's the athleisure sponsor of Maker? Is it Lululemon? Lululemon, which I'm wearing right now. Uh, you were like, I'm wearing my Lululemons and stripped off your your dress to uh, reveal your Lululemons, and there was amazing energy in that room. And it'll be interesting for us to see as we're you know as we're planning Women of the Year, as you're planning Makers, what do real life events look like going forward? Because when you think back to February, where we were thousand plus people in a room and packed into dinner and having conversations. What does that look like this year or next year? I think anybody that's in that space of bringing people together uh, in real life is trying to understand what that looks like now. Yeah, completely. Oh my gosh. It's so true, Sam. I mean, I don't know about you, but if I'm being transparent, it's, you know, there's a lot of innovation that has to happen. I mean, we completely. have to reinvent these experiences and, and I'm, I'm one who loves that kind of challenge, but it is the uncertainty of it and being a leader um, is it's hard to lead when there's so much uncertainty. I don't know if you're feeling that. Yeah, completely. Like, what are you hearing from your team? Like, I think I've been very open with my team. We're on Zoom constantly and we're kind of in a place that we can work a lot digitally, but I think we were, all, we're always checking in with each other. Like I'm talking to the team, like if you need to take a mental health day, like people are right. zoomed out. Like if you're doing eight to 10 hours of Zoom every day, like you need to have a day where you don't have a screen and you need to have as a boss or leader, you need to let your team know that it's, you know, it's okay to have like a bad day on Monday. I had my whole team meeting and then I had a terrible like migraine and I had to, you know, back away from a screen for a day, but telling them that and making sure that they know that I know that this is a journey, a journey. This is a journey that happens for different people at different times. So if you're having a shit day, like it's okay to, you know, take a mental health day for yourself. Yes. I mean, someone just said mental health days are a must. I, you know, I couldn't agree more. And I think it's sort of weird. You feel guilty. Like, should I take a day off? But people should take days off and we need vacation days. And we still have, we just have to readjust to this new, this new normal. But I want to hear, well, there are two things. I, I also want to hear about the fun. I have to say, I love the fun, like three ingredient recipe things oh that you're God. doing. Oh my 
we've yeah. never, we, you know, oh, we're no. not bon appetit. We've never really been a recipe place, but right. in the last couple of weeks, the team themselves have embraced cooking and, and a lot of our two or four ingredient recipes are going like off the charts for us. So we did that Instagram coffee that everybody's been talking about. Jenny Singer, a writer for us, wrote in an amazing voice on how she made that. Um, Perry, who's our digital director, did her banana bread. We've done Disney. Wait, I'm going to Dole Whip, which is something as a foreigner that wasn't super familiar to me. We've done a Disney grilled cheese. Um, we don't say we're, the, we're not the bon appetit of cooking. Some of the team have described us as the couch to 5K of cooking for women in America. Oh my gosh, I'm sure all the team, makers team watching this is laughing because I did couch potato to 5K, like literally. I learned how to be a runner in that. Uh, anyway, um, all right, so Sam, what have been, this is my favorite part of these things, what have been, what's been your three items, um, your survival kit to get through all of this? Uh, FaceTime, one. I could not imagine going through a pandemic without having a FaceTime with my nieces and nephews. Like we are, when you look at silver linings, we live in a world where you and I can have this conversation on Instagram Live, where I can call my mom and my dad and my brother and my sister and my nieces and nephews. If this was happening 15 years ago, we wouldn't have had, had that. And I think that FaceTime and video chat is, is, is a silver lining. Almost um, in a new way. Do you find you're bonding in new ways with people? Yeah, like I'm watching things together with people. Right. Like, I would, like, like I'm like starting on Netflix right now. We're gonna watch it together. Um, so that's one. I think number two for me is I, I, I've worked in news for a lot of years, but I, I haven't watched that much news in the last couple of weeks, to be honest. I have gone to a series that I haven't really seen that much of before. So I'd never watched The Soprano, so I watched that through. Me and Tony Soprano were having red wine and Italian meals a lot of the first couple of weeks. Tony now Soprano is a good date. It's a good day. Now me, Elaine and Jerry Seinfeld are like having so much fun. Like I never watched so much Seinfeld. I kind of dipped in and out of it. So I feel like um, rediscovering classics, especially on, on, on TV and streaming is um, definitely number two. And number three is baking. I, lo I do like to cook, but the opportunity to cook more. I do a lot of like Irish bread and... and um, soda bread and Guinness bread. So I do feel like if you get to the end of the day and you've been on Zoom calls all day and you want to do something that's not screen associated, having flour and walnuts and mixtures and putting something together and putting it in the oven and seeing something hopefully good come out is there's a joy in that. Now, have you made it so many times that you don't even need to look at the recipe anymore? Are you a pro? A little bit. I do have, um, I've started a barter system now because I had a friend um, who's Italian who bartered me a huge lasagna for one of my Irish soda breads. So I, I've started like a social distance barter system because I'm kind of sick of eating it. So, and it's a couple of things that I know to, to make. So having a little bit of a barter with your friends that know how to- I thought you were going to say a barter for yeast because I know that finding- No, yeast, yeast is very hard to find. I don't need yeast for my bread. So that's helpful. Oh, that's good too. Yeah. So Irish soda bread does not need yeast? No, it's whole wheat, which is, you can get on Amazon. You can't necessarily get it in every store. It's a lot of whole wheat. So it's like a brown bread, uh, but it doesn't need yeast, no. Okay. All right, everybody. What are you Let's cooking? Soda bread. Let's do a challenge. I, I know. Like I love that. You're what are you cooking? Are you cooking? What are you cooking? I am, uh, my husband is the bread maker in, uh, in our family. So he's been doing a lot of bread. Yes, we've been cooking every single night. It's been so fun. And, and again, bringing the three of us together, which has been sort of magical to, I mean, I heard my son on a Zoom call the other day saying, you know, people are saying, what are you doing? He's like, well, I'm cooking. <laughs> So that's been great. We're, you know what I just saw, um, we, the Makers Board um, has uh, one of our members on a board meeting today, she mentioned Airbnb online experiences. Oh, wow. Where, so you can go on and you could go to Ireland and have someone teach you how to make Irish soda bread, or you could go to, you know, Italy and make pasta. I mean, it's-, it's And I'm, I love those experiences that are supporting small businesses, because right. especially in the hospitality world, like I'm seeing it pop up on Instagram, like uh, a grandmother in Italy that runs like a restaurant is going to teach you how to make pasta and you can donate via Apple Pay or PayPal or whatever. And I think anything that you can do to support local business in this time that's 
quite hard for them. Um, if you have some disposable income is, is a good thing to do. I agree. You, it's, it's, it's an amazing experience. You feel good about it. Supporting local businesses. Is so, I mean, it's speaking of that, I just, I, I want to end on, I am curious and, and maybe you're like me where there are multiple answers to this question, but um, you know, we at Makers have been focused on the WPA, the Women's Prison Association and formerly incarcerated women and, and really making sure that we're shining a light on the work that they're doing, specifically in New York and helping, you know, a lot of women are getting out of prison right now and don't have the normal resources that they do to, you know, let alone, it's hard to, 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 to re-enter into the, world, the real world, but especially now. Um, so I'm wondering if there are any causes that you, that are particularly true to your heart. For us, it really is to, to go back to um, if anybody's in a situation where domestic violence is an issue during a pandemic, we've been trying to shine a light on that. So that is really kind of the cause that Glamour has kind of taken on okay. to either support and get the message out and uh, make sure that women that are in that situation know where they can get help and when they can get assistance, because it can feel if you're in that situation, it can feel very um, suffocating in, during normal times, but in, during a pandemic, so much more intense. So that that's really one that we're trying to cover as much as possible. That's great. I mean, we're here. I mean, if you need makers, if there's anything we can do, Sam, we Thank are you here so for much. You. You're, you're such a bright and shiny and happy face to see. You've made you too. Day. Oh my God, I really enjoyed this. And sometime as we reinvent, we'll bring makers and glamour together and we'll do something. I'd Fun. love that. I'd love that. Um, <laughs> all right, everybody. I'm Dylan McGee, founder and executive producer. I'm here with the amazing Sam Barry, editor in chief of Glamour Magazine. Such an inspiration. Thank you for all you're doing. Thank you so much. Lovely Bye. to chat. Bye. You too.